Hi dears, I don't want to make this video even longer but I have a few announcements that I wanted you to hear out. First, I created a server on Discord so link will be in description, second I'm gonna try to post 5 videos next week just like this week but we will say about that because I have to say that it's really tiring, AMD the third Thimji not that important but still, Momojiro is one of my comfort ships so forgive me if I failed with angst in this video. Anyway, please subscribe, leave a comment and like, love you all so much, enjoy. Fast feedback. The characters are already in the third grade of high school. Back to the story. It was a chilly afternoon. Momo was just returning from extracurricular activities and was heading towards the dorms when a boy stopped her. At first, Momo thought that he was some stranger from a different class, so of course she wanted to say enthusiastically, sorry, but I don't think I'm the person you're looking for but as soon as she saw who was hiding under the guise of, stranger, she quickened her pace to disappear from his sight and range as quickly as possible. She did not look back, but the boy did not give up and tried to stop her with a pleading voice. He knew that Momo has always had a big heart and cannot say no to others, so he wanted to take advantage of it, if only he could. He shouted that without her he would not pass to the next grade, or that it was his only chance that he would not be kicked out of school, but Momo had no idea what he meant. Then, when she was almost out of his reach, she remembered something she had used to help this boy, when they were still dating. When the boy thought he had lost his only chance to get a help from her, Momo stopped and looked down at the ground, giving out a soft, almost inaudible chuckle. You're having trouble with chemistry, again. I I didn't know you were about to stop. Thank you. And yes, since we broke up I can't keep up with my class. And I know that it's selfish for me to ask you about something like this, but you're the only one person I know, that actually can help me with this. So, Mo I mean Yaoyorozu san, could you help me with chemistry, please? He said, folding both hands together as if in prayer and bowed, thus expressing great desperation for the willingness and need for her help. I really want to, but I don't know if that's okay towards my girlfriend. I swear that it's just for studying, I have no hidden intentions. I know, I know, you're not this kind of person that is ruining others' relationships, just for fun. But also, lately we have a lot of practice in our schedules and I don't know if I'll be able to find much time for you. Yaoyorozu san, I swear, it doesn't have to be every day, I will adapt to you and your schedule, I can take these lessons even late at night, or fresh in the morning. Just, please, help me. I am desperate and I know I may have sound like an idiot right now, but no teacher compares to you. That's really nice and thank you, but I have to think about it first. Okay, oh of course, thank you so much, that you easted your time on me, and that you will consider my request. You're an angel, she blushed a little and she bowed as well. Thank you, now go. It's late, I am sure you are already late for dinner in your dorms. I I am, thank you again, so much, Yaoyorozu san. He yelled once more before speeding to his dorms. She just smiled at him before started heading to her dorm as well. After 10 minutes she was already in a corridor. I'm back. Did you guys already ate dinner? She yelled to inform her classmates that she is back and she can now help them if they needed her earlier, when she was on her lessons. But before she could even remove her shoes completely, someone jumped on her, wrapping arms around her neck and showering her with kisses. Baby, I missed you. Kyoka, baby, you were waiting for me here. Of course, I couldn't lose the opportunity to welcome you first. How was your lesson? It was tiring, did you ate already? They were eating like an hour ago but don't worry, I waited for you so now we can eat together. Oh thank you, you really didn't have to. Aren't you hungry? Don't worry about me, let's leave your books upstairs and make some dinner, shall we? Okay. Momo smiled sweetly and kissed her girlfriend on the lips. Jiro immediately returned the kiss, placing her hands on her girlfriend's neck again while Momo's hands were on Jiro's hips. At this point, they were passionately making out in the corridor when someone suddenly entered. Yeah, that's why I think I heard something Jiro. Momo. The girls immediately jumped away from each other. Beep. Denki. We shouldn't be here. I told you we can go for these chips later, didn't I? Oops. Sorry for disturbing. And no, we were actually. Sorry, it's our fault. We shouldn't do that on the corridor. Better for you that it was just this idiot and me, not Mina. Yeah, we would appreciate if you won't tell her, or she's gonna come here every day after Momo's practice, just to take a photo or whatever. Of course we won't. Come on Denki, let's go. Wait but my chips. We can go buy some. 
Fine. They went out of the dorms, Shinso tried to get Denki out of this building as fast as he could so that they won't disturb them, even though they practically ruined the moment already. So, let's go eat. Yeah. She nodded before grabbing Jiro's hand and turning towards the kitchen. Let's go. As they were already in the kitchen and Jiro sat on a high chair in front of the table and Momo stand by kitchen island looking for a bowl. So, what are we gonna eat? Hmm. She thought for a minute. What about sukiyaki? Oh, yeah, let's do it. The girls started looking for all the ingredients they needed. They shared tasks equally and during the conversation they cooked together. Of course, they didn't go without a couple of kisses while cooking, but rather everything went quite smoothly. Both Momo and Kyoka cooked well, so the girls were sure that some of their classmates would want to try their dish, so they prepared a little more, just in case. After 40 minutes the dish was ready to be served. While Jiro laid out the plates, Momo shifted the food into a clean dish for them to lay out. As they both sat down, facing each other, they put their hands together as in prayer and said at the same time, Itadakimasu. As they started grabbing vegetables and meat to eat, Momo gulped a little too loud what made Jiro look at her. Something's wrong love. Well, I wanted to ask about your opinion in something. Well, I turned to hearing. Ha ha, okay. So today, when I was walking back to the dorms, someone called for me. And of course I wanted to say that I am probably not the person they're looking for, but when I looked at this person a little more precisely, they turned out to be my ex, haha. <laughs> she laughed awkwardly. Then she looked at Jiro that was just looking at her with the same smile. And, what did he want it from you? She asked before putting a mushroom into her mouth. He wanted me to start giving him a chemistry lessons again. As soon as Jiro hear that she almost choked on this little mushroom. Cough cough. Sorry. What? Baby. Are you okay? Let me help you. She handed her a glass of water and got up near her to help her stop choking. Baby. She asked with a worried expression. It's alright. It's alright. Don't worry. Can you repeat what did you just said? Oh. He asked me if I could give him lessons. Why you and not the teachers? I don't really know. But he said that no one can explain this to him other than me. You know, it sounds a bit strange. But of course I can't stop you. But, you're not mad or something. No, of course not. If it's not a bother for you then of course do it. You can call him, don't worry. Are you crazy? I am eating dinner with my amazing girlfriend right now. There's no way I am calling him in the middle of our date. Jiro immediately turned into a real tomato. Why are you so cute? Ah baby, I think you're talking about yourself. They were this cute for the rest of their dinner. After eating they cleaned up and went to Jiro's room. Do you by any chance want me to play you new music I wrote? Of course love. When they arrived to Jiro's room, Momo sat on her bed pulling G out her phone while Kyoka prepared her guitar. I'll tune it up quickly and start. Okay baby, meanwhile I will text Yasu, okay. You guys still call each other by names. Oh my, I didn't even realize I called him by his name, sorry. I meant Namura-san. Oh no need to worry. Don't apologize. I was just concerned because first time I hear when you're calling someone other than me by the name. Really? Yeah, you call everyone by their surnames, didn't you realize, baby? Not really, haha. I think I have to pay more attention from now on. Okay, text him fast so that we'll have more time together. Okay. She smiled at her and started searching for her ex-boyfriend phone number. Found it. She said while clicking on the button to text the boy. Dot. Private chat between Momo and Yasu. Hello Namura-san. I thought about these lessons we were talking about and I decided to agree. Let's set the meeting on Fridays in the afternoon, what do you think? Yaoyorozu-san, thank you so much. I am super grateful, and about the time, I fully agree. Anything to get your help, again thank you so much, and see you tomorrow. Yes, take care, bye. Bye. In the real world. Done. Done. You can play baby. Before Jiro started playing on her guitar, she turned the lights off, sat beside Momo and leaned on her girlfriend's chest. They were both now lying on Thare's backs, looking at a dark ceiling reflecting the light from outside the window. Momo closed her eyes and Jiro began to softly yank the strings which made amazing and calm sounds. The girls were in their own world, with no one to disturb their amazing aura and the time they could spend together on Thursday night. The longer Kyoka played, the more Momo began to bounce. Feeling the warmth covering her body, she felt that it was with Jiro that she could spend her whole life, and that she would not give her up for anything in the world. After 30 minutes of quiet strumming, 
Jiro felt under her head the calmer and longer exhalations that Momo was making. Her chest was steadily going up and down. Until finally Jiro realized that her lovely girlfriend had fallen asleep, hugging her as if she was about to run away somewhere. But where would she run? When she lies on the person that she loves more than anything else in the world. Even if Jiro thought their whole picture was perfect at that moment and no one would dare to destroy it, Jiro had to wake up Momo, at least so that she washed off the delicate makeup still visible on her face and changed her clothes so that she would not fall asleep in her uniform, and then Mr. Aizawa would shout on her that her uniform is crumpled. Kyoka gently got up from Momo's chest and lightly shook her shoulder in an attempt to wake up. Baby, I am sorry for waking you up, but can you get up for me? Come on, we will wash your face and change your clothes, what do you think? She said in such a soft voice as if she was singing a lullaby, which made Momo, even though she could hear her girlfriend, only reply with gentle nods of the head. Um hum, let's go love, I know you're tired. Next time we will change our clothes before falling on a bed, okay. Kyoka, could you maybe, take care of me? I don't think I am able to do it myself. Why you want me to change your sea clothes? If that's not a problem. Momo's sleepy voice spoke through her tired body. And no it's, not. I'll do it. Kyoka calmly got up from the bed and went to her makeup bag. She took out two cotton pads and applied a makeup remover on one of them. While the other one was dipped in warm water with a face wash. Then she went back to Momo and washed off her delicate makeup. Once she had thrown away the dirty cotton pad, she used another one, which she prepared to apply a facial cleanser to Momo's skin and rubbed it lightly to create foam. When she was sure that there was foam all over her girlfriend's face, she took a towel in her hand, spread warm water over it and washed off the rest of the liquid. Then she took the cream to soothe her facial muscles and massaged it into Momo's skin as gently as possible so as not to wake her up. When she took care of her beloved's face, it was time for something that Jiro was a bit afraid of, she had to change her clothes. It is true that they had been together for three years, but it still made her feel as if she was violating her girlfriend's privacy. Are you sure you're okay with it, baby? I am. She smiled sweetly with closed eyes. Okay. Jiro picked up Momo's clothes that she always kept in the wardrobe in case Momo wanted to change in her room. She chose a loose t-shirt and sleeping shorts and approached her beloved. She looked at her with tender eyes and gently pulled off her jacket. Then the shirt and all the rest. She kissed the back of Momo's hand and dressed her in the previously made clothes. Then she quickly took care of her own hygiene and when she returned to the room with wet hair, she saw her girlfriend with her face hidden deep in the pillow. Her sleeping face touched Jiro's heart, so the girl quickly jumped into the bed next to Momo, hugged her tightly, making sure that she did not disturb her with her wet hair and fell asleep covering their bodies with a blanket. Next morning, when the girls woke up, they quickly dressed and went to breakfast. That's what I'm saying. Today there's no way she'll make a test. No way. I made sure to take care of her evening so she will be in a good mood. I am telling you. What are you guys talking about? Mina is trying to convince us that there's no way we are having a test on today's lesson with midnight, but you never know. I know. Trust me, there's no way. I'm telling you. Yeah, yeah, overall, their morning wasn't different from any other. When everyone went to school and theirs lesson started, Jiro and Momo talked a bit at lunch as always, but nothing else as each of them had some responsibilities. After school, Jiro wanted to go on a date with Momo, since it was already Friday afternoon but when she walked over to Momo, she saw her with Yasu. Haha, yes thank you so much. But I am actually planning to fully submit to you. So the place is up to you. It can be library or some cafe. You can choose. Oh, okay then, let's go to the cafe, I would give anything for a cup of tea. Actually me too, haha, let's go. As Jiro was looking at the perfect picture of her girlfriend and this boy she felt a small stab in her heart. She didn't know why, but she had a small thought. They look like a real family, unlike me and her. She didn't even realize when a tiny tear fall down her cheek. Wait, what am I even thinking about? She quickly wiped the tear and shaked her head. She loves you, he's only the past. Really distant past. She said to herself and went to the opposite direction. Dot. It was already 8 p.m. and Momo still didn't came back. Hey Mina, did you by any chance seen Momo somewhere around? Momo. No I didn't, I thought she's with you. No. Unfortunately, she's not. Don't worry, maybe Denki and Shinso saw her. After all they're sitting outside. Good idea, I'll go ask them. Okay, update me later. 
sure. Jiro went outside and she started looking for Denki and Shinso. She was walking through the garden when she heard a familiar laugh. Ha ha ha, stop. I remember that but it's so embarrassing. No it's not. You looked cute that time. Yeah, with a big red nose, for sure. Ha ha. Okay okay, enough about past. How's life? It's good actually. My hero training is going pretty well, although practice sometimes can be tough I still love it. And I have amazing friends that are helping me if I need them, what about you? I am pretty much the same as you. Great friends, supportive family and tough work. Ha ha, and what about your love life? Did you find someone? Me? No. Actually I am still single, I didn't fell mate yet, and even if I go on a date, they always say the same, I thought you were different, or something like this. Why are they talking about it when she's supposed to be with me right now? Jiro whispered to herself, not even realizing that her hands clenched into fists. But she quickly went back to listening to theirs conversation. Oh, that's a pity. After all you're amazing the way you are. Maybe you think like this, but they definitely expected someone manly like Kirishima Ijiro, handsome like Todoroki Shoto and clever like Iida Tenya. Ah, these guys. Oh my god, don't you remember? They're all in my class. All three. Exactly. Damn, now that's a luck. Haha, ha, maybe. But what about your love life? Me. I do have a girlfriend. I told you, remember? Really. I should have forgot. How is she? She's but then she stopped in the middle of the sentence, as someone bumped into them with rush. Oh my. I am so so sorry. I am just really late for my night shift and I didn't see you under this dark sky, sorry. Please forgive me. Oh that's alright don't worry. Really. Yes. Go on, we don't want you to be late. Thank you stranger San, I'll get going then. Bye and sorry once more. Bye. The girl run off, leaving confused Yasu and Momo alone again. Wait, night shift. It's that late already. Oh my, it's 8pm. I should get going. Yeah me too. But hey Yaoyorozu San, I don't really know how to do salt dissociation tasks so would you mind us meeting for just an hour tomorrow morning? Hmm, okay fine. See you tomorrow, oh and text me when you get back okay. Okay. They hugged for goodbye and Momo started running towards her dorm's entrance. Jiro just stood there like a tree, without even a blink. Because one question was going through her mind over and over again, what Momo was going to say about me. As she finally stopped zoning out, she began to heading to the dorms as well. This night they just texted conservative, good night, to each other and went to sleep. The next day Momo left the dorms very early, she only left Jiro a breakfast with the small letter that was saying, I love you. She also got back really late at night, when almost everyone was already asleep. Besides Jiro that was waiting for her, unfortunately Momo didn't show up in her room. When it came to Sunday morning they only managed to eat breakfast together and with theirs classmates because this time Jiro had to go to the centrum to take care of few things. And that's how mostly all of their next week went by. Girls had a lot of assignments to do so there was no way for any kind of rapprochement. What added fuel to the fire was the fact that Momo and Yasu didn't only meet on Friday afternoons, this time they met as often as they could to handle as much material as possible in a short time. On top of that, Yasu started helping Momo with English, which is something Jiro would normally assist her with. All these situations led to one conversation, that could change everything forever. It was again Thursday evening. Momo got back from from her extracurricular activities, laughing about some joke that Yasu told her before leaving to his own dorms. Something she did not expect to see, was Jiro shaking from cold, while waiting for her with arms crossed and looking at her reproachfully. Baby, why are you still up? And why are you outside? It's really cold, go inside or you're going to catch a cold. Stop with this caring. She stopped her sweet voice immediately, even though it was already heartbreaking. Did something happened? Yes Yaoyorozu, something happened. Are you cheating on me? She asked with a little cracked voice. W what? Where does such an idea came from? Answer the question. Are you? Of course not. How could I then why? Why are you spending more time with your ex than with me? I know. Please, let me speak. I was really patient. I tried to be understanding. I tolerated it. But I can't do it anymore. I can't Momo. I am sorry but this is not how I want our relationship to look like. I tried to survive at least this week. But I couldn't. I see you one time for day and you know where it is. At school, when we pass each other in the corridor. This is how you want it to look like. Then sorry, but I don't. 
Tears were falling down her cheeks. I. I need space, but this time from our relationship. So basically nothing will change from our last week, right? Just. Think about what you really want and then come to me and tell me what you really want. Because eventually I can't give you that. Kyoka Jiro. For the time we will be separated, it's Jiro. And don't worry about the awkward atmosphere, I am leaving to my parents from tomorrow until Monday, so you'll have a lot of time. Good night, Yaoyorozu. She turned on her feet and went upstairs, leaving crying Momo in front of the doors. Momo watched her, walking away and she couldn't believe what just happened. Kyoka, I told you it's Jiro. But she stopped in the middle of the sentence. Please, don't go. I know I've been terrible these few days. That I wasn't paying attention to you. I don't know at all and I admire how long you endured it all, but. I did it all to finish classes with him before Christmas as soon as possible. If I did not meet with him every day, but only on Fridays, our cooperation would last until the new year, and I will not let some chemicals prevent me from spending time with you. Sorry Kyoka. I really know I beeped up, I should have told you, but please believe me, I would never cheat on you. I love you most in the world and I cannot imagine my life without you. Just seeing you all cry breaks my heart a half. But I know it's my fault, and you won't forgive me that easily. But please give me one more chance. She was stopped by the sudden hug. Momo. I am really, really sorry. So sorry. They were crying. Jiro wath tears of disappointed in herself and Momo because he hurted the most important person in her life. I want to show you something, is that okay? Wait, can you forgive me? We have to work for a little, but yes baby. I do. Then lead the way. Jiro grabbed Momo's hand and lead the way to her room. Can you sit on my bed? I wanted to sing something to you. I I don't think I deserve. Baby, don't even say that. You deserve everything in this world, except bad things, and more. No. You do. Shish. Please sit, and listen. Jiro kissed Momo's forehead and made her sit down. She took a guitar to her hands and started playing soft notes. You're the light, you're the night, you're the color of my blood. You're the cure, you're the pain, you're the only thing I want to touch. Never knew that it can me so much. So much You're the fear I don't care Cause I've never been so high Follow me to the dark Let me take you past the satellites You can see the what you brought to life To life So love me like you do Love me like you do Love me like you do Touch me like you do, da, da, touch me like you do. Oh, what are you waiting for? Fading in, fading out on the edge of paradise. Every inch of your skin is a holy grail of God. Fine, only you can set my heart on fire. On fire.
She stopped and looked at Momo. Baby, why are you crying? I I just, I can't. She couldn't even say a word. Ah baby, they're there. Come to me. She sat beside her and hugged her. Please let's never fight again. Okay. They lied down on the bed while talking about everything and nothing. The end. And that's all for today's video. I hope you liked it and please I would really appreciate if you'd like to look at the server I created for you guys. Please subscribe, leave a like and comment. Love you all bye. Are you interested in buying yourself some My Hero Academia merch? Some amazing clothes with your favorite character on it? Like Katsuki Bakugao, Shouto Todoroki, and Izuki Midoriya. Go click the link in my description box now. And get some awesome discounts from 20% up to 65% off. They offer you free worldwide shipping on orders over $39.90. So, what are you waiting for? Link in the description.